Five baby. country close up, one fifteen eighty. Well, if uh, you're forced into it, you find out you can do a lot of things you don't think you can do. And most people are more afraid of it because they think it's going to be technical. Once they get into it, they find out it's a lot easier than they really think it is. And most people find out that, you know, if they don't know what they're doing, if they take their time, they can make it look just as good and do just as nice a job as somebody else. Uh, Jimmy Carter got his start here and went on to become President of the United States in 1976. And therefore, I think a lot of candidates all the candidates believe that they, if they get some momentum out of Iowa and win here, uh, they can build a perhaps a successful winning campaign all the way. In the Midwest, I've done it. I usually have at least one tour a year that comes to this area, and I, I feel very supported here. There's a greater appreciation for dances that maybe have more familiar music, that where there's something familiar, that may be the case. Hello, I'm Deborah Cutter. And I'm Bob Pyle. This evening on Five Country Close-Up, we'll find out just what grassroots politics really are. And we'll look at an old art form that's gaining new interest. But first, a look at a twist to the inflation pinch theme. The experts are telling us hard times are just around the corner. And that means for most businesses as well as individuals. But Twyla Young found out that there are some products that do just fine when money is tight. We've insulated the house to try and cut down on heat bills and utility bills. We tried to cut down at the grocery store a little bit more, uh, buying less junk food, and I've been making more cookies and uh, buying some of the or cutting down, cutting out some of the things that I can make at home rather than buy at the store. Insulation, flour, auto parts. What do these things have in common? They represent items that people tend to buy during times of economic slowdown in order to protect their standard of living. One of the simplest ways that many people use to cut their grocery bill is to switch from prepared foods to homemade goods. I think there has been a, more baking this Christmas season than there was last Christmas season. I guess it could be signs, you know, one of the signs of the recession, you know, more baking, getting back to the basics. Bushy says that not only are folks buying more flour, they're buying a wider variety of flours, like whole wheat, rye, and graham, as well as more sugar and other basic baking supplies. The trend is by no means universal. One Des Moines grocery chain president says that his managers think they are selling more flour than they have in the past. But the buyer for another Iowa chain says he does not think that's happening, at least not yet. At any rate, General Mills, the nation's largest producer of flour, says that after annual declines of 2 to 3% in flour sales through much of this decade, in 1979, the company's flour sales jumped by 6%. By baking more and buying less prepared goods, a family may be able to save a few dollars every month. But what if the plumbing breaks, or the living room just has to be painted, or the roof leaks? If a family can do that work instead of hiring it done, it can save a bundle. If you've ever called a plumber, you've called a carpenter, you've called anybody, the labor costs are so expensive that it's cheaper to go out and do it yourself. You can, you know, you can, and you come into a place like this, you can buy your, all the materials you need, and then you can go home and do it yourself. You've saved yourself a lot of money. Some of the things, though, are fairly specialized. A lot of people wouldn't think that they could fix electrical problems in their home or pro plumbing problems in their home or do insulation or things like that. Well, if uh, you're forced into it, you find out you can do a lot of things you don't think you can do. And most people are more afraid of it because they think it's going to be technical. Once they get into it, they find out it's a lot easier than they really think it is. And most people find out that, you know, if they don't know what they're doing, if they take their time, they can make it look just as good and do just as nice a job as somebody else. Crittenden says that business was particularly good this past year, and he expects it to grow next year. The National Hardware Dealers Association counts some 36,000 hardware, home center, and retail lumber outlets among its members, and it says that sales for them topped $30 billion in 1979, a 14% jump over the year before. This year, the association expects growth of at least 12% in overall sales. During a recession, people tend to travel less and therefore have more time to spend working on their homes. But inflated interest rates and the scarcity of mortgage money also add to the home fix-up industry's prosperity. Say recently when the 
interest rates have gone so high, people aren't buying homes so much, they're fixing up the old homes. You'll feel, find they'll come in, they'll buy paneling, uh, paint, and they're making their homes a lot nicer, more livable, so they can stand, you know, stand to live there, so to speak, for you know, a few more years until the interest rates come down or until their wages get up high enough that they can afford to buy a new home. An automobile is the second largest investment that most people will make, second only to a home. And in times when money is short and interest rates are high, a lot of people try to stretch that investment as far as it'll go. Like everything else, the uh, price of mechanics have gone up too. Um, people are finding that they, can, uh, that they can do things themselves, and they're not as hard as, hard as they appear to be. People used to, if, if anything went wrong with the car, even if they weren't going to trade off the car, they'd just take it to a mechanic and have it fixed, except for that few handful of people that, that always like to tinker with cars. Well, with inflation the way it is, it's, it's gotten increasingly more expensive to take it to somebody else and have them do it. Uh, people are finding that, that a lot of the things that they have been taking in to have done, they can do themselves. The auto parts business has in past years done well in those times when the new car industry does poorly. In 1970, a year of mild recession, and in 1974, a year of more severe recession, the auto industry suffered. But General Parts Company, which distributes Napa replacement parts, saw sales jump 24 and 18 percent respectively during those years. During 1979, the auto industry in this country suffered. But Dahl and his auto parts store did not. Basically, with the economy the way it is right now, people can't afford to buy new cars or they don't want to spend the money to buy new cars. Basically, what they're doing is they're keeping their old cars longer. And in order to keep them longer, they have to maintain them. And in order to maintain them, that's why we're here. But what about the people who are sacrificing the new homes and the new cars and fixing up the old? Do they feel they are suffering? Maybe, but at the same time, a lot of people seem to be finding satisfaction from fixing things that in the past they might just have replaced. In the winter time, it's more just minor repair, repair jobs. When spring comes around, then they all start in on your major projects like basements or they'll have things they want to do outside, and you know, major projects, fencing, stuff like that. Now with uh, shorter work weeks, they've got more time to do things themselves, and they find out that they can do it, and they really, most people enjoy it. They use it more of a relaxation type thing. I think it's well, a feeling of accomplishment of knowing that you've, that you've tinkered with your own car and made it run better. I think people, people are a little hesitant to try it at first and then once they do they find out that they can do something and they like it. A last interesting note, Bob, Twyla also found out that in times of economic straits, people tend to turn away from expensive alcohol and drink beer in record-breaking amounts. I think I can relate to that, Debbie. <laughs> Coming up next, a visit with grassroots political organizers and a look at how Iowa caucuses really work.